Hey everybody, it's Mike again with Unity Intercom, and I'm going to do a real fast video. Um, we've got a lot of people out there that are Unity Intercom users that have their own servers, and uh, and a lot of new customers coming on that are just starting out, that are just commissioning their, their Unity Intercom servers, and they're looking to take the next step towards um, when you have when you have an event that's far away. So in this scenario, I'm about to show you real quick, uh, the Unity Intercom server is running on a Mac computer and it's there in Los Angeles here in the United States. There's gonna be an event going on in Australia and rather than, what I always tell people, rather than bring a server and fly it out to Australia, Let's just say that we contracted with someone that was in Australia or we had a team go out there. We're going to keep, though, the Unity Intercom server in Los Angeles in the United States on, you know, on good networks, uh, on, on, good, on a good ISP that has the port forwarding set up in our router so that people can connect to our Unity Intercom from anywhere in the world. And the one thing, though, if we have a team or you know, people as part of our organization in Australia at the event, you, using our Unity Intercom back in Los Angeles, they, they aren't gonna have local program feed right away. And that's, what, that's one of the reasons a lot of people try to bring a Unity Intercom server to Australia as they think that's the only way to get a program feed in. So enter Unity Connect, and that's what I'm gonna sh show here. Instead, there needs to be a, we are going to need a Mac computer in Australia at the event, but it's not going to be running the Unity Intercom server. It's going to be running our other program, Unity Connect. And you can research later, of course, more details about it, but Unity Connect can send up to 64 channels of audio across the internet to and from um, an unlimited amount of locations. So Unity Connect is gonna be running on a Mac computer at the local event in Australia, receiving local program audio up to 64 audio channels. That could be from a soundboard. Uh, here's a USB device in the uh, picture here illustrated. Uh, it could be, you know, 16 channels of Dante. We're gonna take that audio at the Mac running in Australia, and we're gonna send that audio to our Mac back in Los Angeles that runs our Unity Intercom server. Generally, on the same Mac is also going to be running Unity Connect because Connect sends audio to another Unity Connect software. And in this illustration, I'm going to say that the Unity Connect software and the Unity Intercom server are both running on that same computer. They can be separated, though, either way. We're going to then... Unity, uh, Unity Connect, the software, is receiving audio from Australia. It's going to write to loopback. Um, Unity Intercom, the server, and Unity Connect, they don't actually talk to each other directly. So Unity Loopback is going to get put in the middle. So Unity Connect sends audio to loopback, and from loopback, Unity Intercom is going to read the audio from loopback and bring that audio into the channels or program feeds for all the people that are on comms. Um, we can have people on comms in Australia that are uh, you know, running around at the event. They will have the benefit of all that local audio that we're bringing in via Connect. That's gonna be in their ears on comms. And people back, at, of course, in the studio back in Los Angeles or at their houses or anywhere else in the world, they're also going to have that local event audio as well, as well as they're going to be on comms. So this right here is kind of the secret sauce behind making Unity Intercom real powerful and simple because there's no special port forwarding um, or special considerations for any of our team at this remote event in Australia. All they needed was internet and a Mac computer. Um, the port forwarding and considerations have already been taken care of back at the home base studio, uh, you know, back here in, in Los Angeles. So sorry for, I know this isn't the best little presentation here, um, but this just gives you the concept of kind of how this whole thing flows. Um, and next, I'm going to transition into... Um, showing showing everybody uh, how we actually do this. And so real quick, uh, let's pretend for a moment that we're back in Australia 
and I have just fired up my Unity Connect computer here, and I am connected to Los Angeles, and here's my Unity Connect. I'm on the outgoing tab, so that means I am receiving Sydney Show audio from an IO device or Dante or you know Dante Virtual Sound Card. Um, I'm getting local audio, and I am sending it to Los Angeles, and I've chosen which audio to send to LA from, uh, this is, remember, we're pretending we're in Australia, and uh, I'm sending the audio to, to the States. And so what it looks like on the States side of things is I'll bring up the server here. Well, actually, uh, forgive me, I'll bring up, uh, let's bring up Connect again, because Connect would be receiving um, and I, you know, I apologize for the roughness of this. This is what it would look like on the connect side, except we would have audio. So I'm in Los Angeles. We would be on our incoming tab and we would be receiving audio from, um, Australia. And we would write that audio to loopback, and it would look, it would look like this. So we're receiving that audio and we're writing it to, um, Loopback, sorry there. Um, Loopback is a virtual, um, ag it can be an aggregate audio device, but it's a virtual software pass-through device. So I've called it Sydney Show Audio, and Unity Connect is writing this audio, and I have, uh, I'm doing eight channels right now that I'm outputting. So this virtual device is available for the Unity server to take the audio from. And so I would go to our Unity server here, uh, remember in this little demonstration, we're in Los Angeles, we're, we're at the home location. I have chosen um, the Sydney Show Audio to be my input device on this in this case. So I can now hop into the channels page and I can select any one of those eight inputs. I can map them to a PL channel for everybody out in the field to be able to use, or I can go to uh, my audio feeds tab and I can make those listen-only program feeds, which are duckable monitoring feeds. And here are, my, here are my eight different sources as well. And I assign the sources up here at the top. So that was basically the conclusion of it. I just wanted to do a super quick demonstration of how we can send audio from somewhere else in the world to a server that's locally to, you know, to us whether it's at someone's house or at a studio, and we can make that audio available as, um, you know, for, for program feeds and uh, without having to send the server anywhere. Thanks, everybody.